<laughs> How do we get them here? A query plagued with deficits and best intentions, starts and fits and dropped connections. How do we get them, i.e. underrepresented students, i.e. black and brown kids here, i.e. school music, I eagerly await the day when they can get what we've got. All they need is their shot and a savior with a baton or a piano or a ukulele. If we could only get a cello and some Mozart into the poor, unwashed hands of each and every child, then, then what? They'll all be smarter, taller, above average. They'll all transcend their socioeconomic status. They'll all have grit. How do we get them here is limited at best. It rests on the primacy of advocacy and access without asking who actually wants or needs this. Are they worse off without us? How do we get them here perpetuates the assumption that music in school automatically functions as inherently good, something good that we have and they need. How do we get them here is built on an us and them framework that perpetuates racist, classist, ableist, and gendered stereotypes and deficit narratives starring superhero educators. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a white music teacher comes to plant potentially meaningful complex musical practices with ta ta ti ti ta and to show us what here I come to save the day looks like in standard western notation. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, my beef is larger than notation. My beef is so much more like what might pass for innovation. Substitute a tablet here, copy a recording of that by ear, and we act as if we've changed the entire game. Upon further inspection, what's remained the same? The deficit here has been misplaced and allowed to sit on them instead of us. If a cover of I Love Rock and Roll is as far as our imaginations will go, the deficit is ours. The supremacy of white, straight, male-dominated, guitar-based rock music in our popular music education scholarship exemplifies the limited scope of innovation that comes from a field lacking diverse points of view. What are the kids into nowadays, asks the white music educator. What's relevant? What's hip? If our answer is the Beatles, we <laughs> must question who we are and who we are not. <laughs> Made safe for use through gentrification, rock and roll offers the veneer of revolution in the most comfortable and comforting package. Of course the next big thing in music ed will be rock and roll, an ethnomusicologist once told me it's white people's music, at least it is now. And after all, white people's music is what music ed does, right? But don't get me wrong, my beef is not with rock and roll. Hell, my beef's not even with the large ensemble. I like hip hop, but it's not a silver bullet. It's not about replacing one genre or set of instruments or a seating arrangement with another. It's not about rock and roll or classical, hip hop or bluegrass, mariachi or disco. It's about music, man. <laughs> I was once in the music, man. <laughs> in fact, I am a third generation member of the school board barbershop quartet from the Music Man. At different times in different community theater productions, my father, my grandfather, and I were all distracted by Professor Harold Hill into singing four part harmony. <laughs> my father, like me, sang lead. <laughs> Only better. Before I was born, he made a living as a musician with basically no school music experience, no private lessons, no need for reading music or a teacher or a classroom. He learned to use his ear. He learned to make his own music. He taught himself to play multiple instruments and to sing with a voice I had longed to emulate my entire life, and I never will. I went to school and learned to read and to follow the cues of a conductor and to think that I should long to emulate others instead of ever finding my own voice. When I play music with my father, there's no doubt in my mind who has the deficit. My father's father sang tenor. In fact, he knew and hung out and was friends with the Buffalo Bills Quartet. You know the ones in the movie? My grandfather taught all three of his children to sing with him in four-part harmony and laid the foundation for their rich musical lives despite never having a music class in school himself. But there is sin in sincere. Mm. My grandfather's one school music experience consisted of performing on stage for the high school musical when he was 17 in blackface. At school in blackface. School 
that place where the existence of music is supposed to be an inherent good. Professor Hill, of course, got away with his scam. The River City parents selectively listened to their kids who think, whose think system inspired performance of the minuet in G was more endearing than anything. That tuba's my Barney. But we cannot expect communities to ignore our failures in school music. I'm not talking about poor performances of Beethoven arrangements for marching band, but our failures to adapt, our failures to engage, our failures, failures to include, or our failures to display a consciousness toward injustice and the ways we are complicit in a system that hates black and brown kids. Do we really expect a child who lives in a world where the color of their skin grants permission for murder by public servants? to believe that singing a sterilized version of a gospel song or tooting a horn along with a tune that is supposed to represent all 54 nations of Africa is worthy of their time? <laughs> it's not that I hate school music. School music has potential, but it's just potential. It's not automatic, which means that access is not enough. Access is only the problem if what school music offers is worth accessing. I do not bring this provocation with intention of insinuation that those in my profession are wrong. We do have superheroes in our ranks. They are caped crusaders who leap tall buildings for their students and fight for truth, justice, and a musical way to engage the world, semicolon, however, comma. School music on the whole cannot claim to be good for all that ails us purely on the basis that it exists. Certainly not as long as it insistently persists in exclusivity. Even if the numbers could tell us that every child in America voluntarily enrolled in a music class for every year of their schooling, I will still want to know whose music are they learning, to what ends, and why. Until then, I will not write my Advocations Association a blank check for advocation, despite the abdication of those who abandoned our seat at the table of opportunity for growth. Let's flip the script on how do we get them here. If it's our deficit and not theirs, could we ask, what is school music missing by systematically excluding particular musics, cultures, and people? What might school music provide that would appeal to, include, represent, and have something to offer a more diverse population? There are more and better questions to ask, and I am all ears. But we've got to move beyond asking, how do we get them here?